so um here's some tips and tricks on camping with dogs no no what no tips and tricks no you just got to yell them no all the time that's <laughs> where everywhere we go no no Today we're talking about traveling with your dogs. Now we take our dogs on quite a bit of different trips, sometimes road trips, sometimes camping, especially camping. We always take our dogs. So I'm going to go through some of the things that we use that make traveling easier and safer and um, keep the dogs happy as we are on the road or when we're at a campground because naturally when they're at a campground they cannot roam free and that makes it a little hard when they're used to having a big backyard that you can put them outside and they can run around. So. I'm gonna start off with safety, brand new. We have one in the car. I haven't even opened this one yet. I should pause. Get it, pause. Okay, so this is not working. I should have opened this before I started recording. Okay, here we go. So what we do in the car is we use dog seat belts. I get these from Amazon. Wow, these are really packaged well. <laughs> All right. So what we use in the car are seat belts for our dogs. And this one's brand spanking new. So our old one, the clip is a little bit, but it still works. These are about $10, $11 on Amazon. What this does is you click this into your seat belt and then clip this to your dog's harness. So what's so important about having seat belts with your dogs? Well, first of all, in the case of any type of situation, you don't want your dogs going flying through the car. But most, most often than not is you don't want your dog jumping out of the car when you're 500, 1,000 miles away from home, you're pumping gas, or one of your kids opens the door and the dog you know, jumps out and goes out into traffic. So this keeps them secure while you're getting in and out. And we also keep our dogs while we are hooking up our camper and getting set up at the campsite, we have them stay in the car, but oftentimes it's warm and we want to roll the windows down or have the back door open, but we don't want them jumping out and running away. Running away. So this keeps them secure and safe and it's really a necessary element. Camping with dogs. Let's talk about camping with dogs. Ugh. Don't stop. Ugh. Okay. The worse than kids. They are not worse than kids. I mean, I love kids. Our dogs love camping. They do. That's not completely No true. journey. No dreamer. You know what? I'll Look it. He's eating a stick. <laughs> no, I mean, he's li he's literally devouring dreamer. that stick. Dreamer. Don't eat the stick. No. See? No. 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 No stick. He spits it out. You notice? He goes... He chews and spits. Journey, you're going to be spilling your water. No, dog. <laughs> All right, this is not very helpful tips and tricks. Here's your tips. Don't get dogs. Stop. Sans animal. Okay, the biggest tip <laughs> is to shut up, eat this guy. <laughs> What's the matter? What are you choking on? <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, you're not being very helpful. Nobody wants to hear this. Uh, you know what? Don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> Here's some Nobody wants to hear it. Don't put it on. <laughs> There's some tips and tricks. Problem solved. You know what? What makes them happy when we go camping? Actually, they Long love walks. walks. Yeah. And, and then they get tired and they crash. So yesterday we took a walk <laughs> for about 45 minutes. Yeah. And then they were like, out. In fact... I brought one in and, and Dreamer laid out here and he was like sucked out in the gravel pit. Gravel pit. It's not really a gravel pit. <laughs> he was sucked out over here. So long walks and then they're tired and you're good to go. Which they need a long walk now. It's morning time. This is probably why they're being behaving. What else? Lick mats. Do you know what a lick mat is? It's when you bring our son-in-law Matt along so they can just lick them. You heard me talking about lick mats. Here are my two lick mats. Lick mats have suction cups on the back 
So you can stick them down on your camper steps, on a wall, on the refrigerator, on the floor. We just kind of suction them down to the floor and then they've got nifty little patterns. Okay, obviously these have to be washed too. Everything that I'm pulling out of here are dirty, so don't pass judgment. I'm about to do like a hardcore sterilizing dog treats, but this is from our last camping. Um, you spread, I use peanut butter. My dogs like peanut butter. Um, so you spread peanut butter over them or whatever treat that's soft and they'll sit there and lick them for, it lasts for about 20, 20, 30 minutes of good time. And of course they're gonna get every little piece out of the little nooks and crannies. One word of caution, if you don't know this, do check your peanut butter that you give your dog. Uh, some of them have xylitol in it, which is deadly. We had a really scary situation when Dreamer was a puppy and he found chewing gum inside my purse and ate a whole pack. And I was not aware of xylitol and the dangerous, although I was aware of a lot of foods that are dangerous for dogs. Xylitol was one of them and I luckily Googled and found out and rushed him to the vet and we were very very fortunate we almost lost him so always check the treats that if it's not dog treats um, double check and make sure there's not artificial sweeteners in there or something that's dangerous i try to get all natural peanut butter with no added sugars and it's just peanuts <laughs> so that's the best way to do it oh so, yeah with the peanut butter and the, yeah so yeah. i discovered lick mats there's these little vinyl why don't you get one out now <laughs> I think they're even better than Kongs because Kongs you have to stuff stuff in and it's really a pain. He knows butt. all about Kong toys. Again, these are really disgusting and used. I need to wash them. They've been in our closet in the camper. But this is great for putting peanut butter and pumpkin and stuffing dog treats in there to keep them occupied, especially at night or when they can't get out and it's raining and there's bad weather. I have heard that a lot of people will put their dog treats in here in their peanut butter and they will freeze them and then they last a lot longer, which sounds like a really cool trick and I'm going to try that. Of course, you can put other things like yogurt and other safe things that dog like, like my dogs like blueberries and freeze those. Um, but Kongs are always a good standby and they're very durable and in a pinch you can toss them and they can play catch with them. So those are helpful tips for dogs that are true. Would you stop? No. You want to go inside? See, there's the no again. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Now she's eating a whole entire log. That is not... <laughs> okay, she's mad at me because I threw her stick over the ledge <laughs> and she won't let it go. Border Collies don't forget. Let it go. They don't, re they don't forget. They have a memory like you have no... Their, their memory is better than an elephant. Or kill something. Create a bone. <laughs> she is kind of ticked off at me. Well, she was making me throw a log. <laughs> and she'd drop it in it on my foot. And it hurt. Yeah. All right. So, um, tips and tricks for dogs. Besides the look mat and the Kongs and the long walks. Frisbees and balls. So, our dogs... Um, Love to play ball, catch, frisbee. However, it's not always possible when you're traveling. Taking them off lead, we have two dogs. One is very shy around people and the other one's very reactive around dogs they, that she doesn't know. And so we have to be a little bit cautious. And of course, traffic and the rules of campgrounds are to keep your dogs on a lead. And we do have two leads that we have purchased and we can move them around and hook them to the picnic table or something else. So they, they're mobile and they're not, you know, on their leash all the time, but they're secure. However, they do like to play catch and there's not always a dog park around. If there's nobody close by and we feel reasonably safe that they're not going to take off and, and their recall is pretty good. But when it comes to reactive dogs, sometimes you have to be careful. Um, we do keep balls and frisbees in the camper, but we also keep a lot of chew toys to keep them active. They're very active dogs. And if we're not walking or if the weather is bad and we're stuck inside, it's important to have a lot of good chew toys. So. Some of my personal favorites, because I have heavy chewers, let me grab those. Hold on. Now, these Kongs, and these dogs have been chewing on these now for probably about a year and a half and have not at all damaged them whatsoever. They've been super, super durable. 
And of course, you know, I can toss them and they can play catch, but it gives them something to chew outside of a bone. And you have to be careful of bones as well because they can splinter and, um, and you have to watch them. I have felt really reasonably safe leaving these lying around when they're in the camper by themselves and them not chewing pieces of the plastic off because most of their toys they can destroy. But that's kind of tricky. You know, this probably pretty much applies just to your dogs. I would say most breeds are much more calm. They're better campers because they just, you know, they're like lap dogs. You really think our dogs are unique in that regard? Oh, yes. I don't think so. Actually, I think if we just, like you said, bring a sheep or two. Yeah. That would be spice. So we should a get a tick. couple of sheep. There's a tick on me. No way. Maybe not. All right, so here's a good tip for camping. Spray your campground with, with flea, flea and tick. tick spray. First and foremost, and I'll show you a picture of this when I get a chance, but when we first get to our campsite, before we ever let the dogs out, before we hook up the camper in our water hose, we have a separate water hose, and we get a flea and tick spray. Uh, I get it at Lowe's or Walmart. I spray down the entire campsite. I'm very tick aware. <laughs> I have had Lyme disease and we've had ticks in our camper before coming off the dogs. So I like to make sure that we get the campsite as clean and also, did I say mosquitoes? Oh, and it also repels mosquitoes too. So it's $9 a bottle, super easy, and a bottle will last you several applications. We use it in our yard as well. But just to be sure, after the dogs have been inside and they've been rolling around in the pine straw and under the trees, I always take my brush, dog brush, which is filthy and full of dog hair. Yeah. So we know how we feel about ticks. You with your Lyme disease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lyme disease. So, so I had Lyme disease. Dr. Sherwood. Anyways, I'm a little tick aware after having Lyme disease, but I'm good. I'm a proctologist. <laughs> Flea and tick spray. That's a must. What else do we do as a prep? That was just such a random tip. Dog wipes. They also have dog wipes with natural oils, um, essential oils in them that repels fleas and ticks. We use those sometimes to wipe them down, but also a lot of times they just get muddy and we want to wipe their paws down before they come into the camper because they like to jump on the bed. So, Carry some disposable dog wipes. Make sure they're for specifically dogs. These came from Target. This is Target brand, um, very inexpensive. But we have several different water cups that you can use when you're walking your dog, whether you're traveling in the car, to make it easier for them to use. But one of the things that I really like to use um, or have on hand is these little uh, flexible, and they fold up. Ah, well, they fold flat little cups and you can use them for food or water. They come in different sizes. Uh, we have several. We have a really small one that we can take and clip to our um, belt hoop or carry with us when we're walking. I will say 95% of what I'm showing you today I got off of Amazon. But naturally Walmart, Target, um, your pet store carries a lot of these items and they're very reasonably priced. So when I started training when we got Journey and she was a puppy I always wanted to have treats available, doggy bags, and my hands free for training. And then I found out this is really great, and I'll have to say fanny packs are back in, despite what we all think about fanny packs, but this one is specifically for your dog. I love this because I can put my phone and my keys in it. I can clip things to it, like my keys, or there, I used to use a clicker for training. And there's places for your doggy bags and for treats. In fact, I think, oh look. <laughs> dog treats stay in here so when we're taking white walk wipes when we're taking walks and hikes that would be a wipe if you're taking walks and hikes this really comes in handy it keeps your hands free and if you've seen journey and dreamer there are kind of a handful and you do they still are not doing great in terms of pulling on their leashes sometimes when there are other animals around they get excited so this keeps me hand free and has been very helpful. So we do have a big basket of toys and we rotate those out as well. But those are basics that we keep on hand all the time and I keep it the camper stocked. We have two bins, one's full of toys and then the other ones are just for their supplies, for their 
poop bags and their little water bowls and all that kind of good stuff. We do take things in the car when we're taking long road trips and always have some good strong chew toys for them. But they're pretty good car riders and they can stay in the car for quite a few hours without complaining. In fact, our dogs are, are pretty accustomed. They're, I think it's like kids. You take kids on long road trips, they get used to it. Now, here's some other things that are not camping related in case you're interested. Sometimes we do not take our camper, when, especially when we're doing certain um, work-related activities, such as art festivals and some other things that we, when we travel for personal reasons and we have to stay in a hotel. There are a lot of hotels out there that do allow dogs. There's usually a deposit. Um, finding one where the deposit is not super pricey is a little tricky. I use Expedia for all our reservations and it will give you the specifics on the whether or not what they charge for dogs and how much the fee, extra fee is. However, usually when you do your Expedia reservations, um, it does not give you an option to pay that fee. So you have to pay it when you arrive and let them know that you have dogs. We haven't really had a lot of issues in, the, in that regard. Like I said, we typically, when we're bringing the dogs, we bring the camper or we're staying in a family member's home that doesn't mind them being there. But um, the camper has really alleviated having to always stay in a hotel when we're working and they're a lot happier in their own space. But if they have to be in the camper all day and we're just going in and out to, you know, take them for short walks and that kind of stuff, you do want to keep them occupied. So it's important to have some activities for them to get bored, especially our dogs, which are border collies, and they get especially bored if you don't give them activities. I hope this helps on some of your tips and tricks. If you have some questions about how to travel with your dogs or other things that might arise, please put them in the comments below and we would love to help you out in traveling with your dogs. Don't leave them at home. They don't like it. In fact, our dogs really love to go camping. See you later and happy camping. Mm -hmm.